Ludwig! Ludwig! Mom, not again this morning, please. You are always shying away from discussing it. But I will come and rigging it into your naughty head until you have everything. I have made my point, Mom, and I am not going back on my words. No. You have made no points. Your points are baseless. Baseless? That's what it always is. Baseless. Because I've refused for you and your husband to ruin my life. Just listen to yourself, Roderick. You call marriage ruining your life? Yes. As far as I am concerned, yes. Roderick, you are sick. I mean, you are sick. You are not getting any younger. You are not. After all the education and exposure, you still think I am sick? Thank you, Mom. Hey, put that crap of metals for me. Roderick! Roderick! I am not hungry. You have to go and eat. But just leave me alone. Am I a child? Don't I know when I want to eat? Please just. What is going on here? Honey, mm -hmm. please tell him to come and eat. Hmm? He has gone to eat. Over three years, Roderick and I have been in this relationship and nothing seems to be working out. Daddy, Roderick doesn't treat me well. I mean, Roderick doesn't give me the care and attention I need as a woman. Daddy, no matter how hard I try, sometimes he makes me feel as though my presence irritates him. I'm not even comfortable with him anymore. I don't know what to do and what not to do that, that would trigger his anger. Daddy... Oh. I'm just tired, Daddy. I, I don't know where all this is leading us to. 
I understand how you feel, quite honestly. But I tell you something, it will not continue like this. I know that the young man is disturbed. But before long, he will show you such high grade of emotional commitment and beginning to wonder whether you can cope with the voltage of his affection. I'm telling you the truth. You see, my father told me that he never married out of love being very honest with you. He said that when his eldest brother felt it was time for him to get married, he went and procured a wife for him. Initially, he felt it was an imposition and he couldn't reconcile himself to the fact that this person is here as a wife. Sometimes if she cooked, he wouldn't eat until he discovered he was starving himself, then he would go and eat. Progressively, he started saying to himself, why don't you reconcile yourself to the fact that this woman is here to stay as your wife? And the moment he said that to himself, he got busy. And we started rolling out. <laughs> you see, nature has been very kind to you. Nature packaged you properly. You are very, very, very richly endowed, and I mean it. Any young man who sees you and doesn't look at you twice requires to be examined. Look, if I were Roderick's age, <laughs> you probably understand what I'm talking about, and I mean it, right? Um, a pretty girl like you must know a few tricks she can employ to engage fully the attention of a man she desires. And I know that this beautiful head of yours will be filled with such tricks. I am now mandating you to seduce him. You can do that, can't you? Can't you? Good, good. That's my girl. Hmm? Now, grab your glass of juice. This is the time for it. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Cheers. is Benita and when my marriage is going to come. I'm going to say this again. Marriage is a no-no for me. Roderick, you see, you better start thinking in that direction. I will not get married. I mean, there are lots of celibates in town. I'm not going to be the first one. God forbid. My son will never be one. So? Since I am the one who is going to get married and be living the married life, I think I should have a greater say and a greater decision as to how, when and to whom I want to get married to. That is if I ever, ever get married. Don't worry about that with you. But you know, time does not wait on people. Oh, mom, my decision is not a function of time. Do me this favor. Stop nagging concerning this thing. Be more concerned about me, my business, my life. Please. I want to be alone. I want to be alone. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my box. 
exchange friend, right? Okay. What is it? Nothing. What is wrong with you and you're telling me nothing? You've been acting moody since morning. I'm okay, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm alright. Don't tell me it's because of that search. Oh god, great. So you've been acting funny because of Basoj. What is the meaning of that? I have told you to leave that boy. What has that boy got to offer? What is it you, you, you see in him anyway? But you know I love him. Don't even give me that crap. You love him. What stupid love is that? Are you going to eat love? All he does is just come into this house and beg you, break your heart and go out and come back again? Is that what you want? Is that the kind of life you want to live? God, you piss me off. Oh, yeah, please, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Lydia. Sweetie, I can't wait to have this place to feel. <laughs> Like you already know how tasty it is. Considering how long it took you to cook it, it gotta be tasty. <laughs> Come on, baby, that's not true. I didn't spend all the time in the kitchen. I think it's gonna be tasty, really. Alright, let's pray. Okay. So, who's gonna pray today? You. Alright. Father, I thank you for the food you're about to eat. Receive it with thanksgiving Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm. Better tell the truth. Better tell the truth. Good. Very good. It's the tool. Thank for over three years now. Don't you think it's time we got married? I mean, the husband and wife, be happy and... Baby, you're not saying anything. Benita, would you allow me enjoy my food, please? Time I talk about this, you seem not to be interested. I mean, come on, I, I'm human, okay? I have feelings. We're engaged, and I'm your wife. Oh, my wife! Don't you ever, ever! Oh, sir, my wife, okay? You can never be my wife. Oh, my God. Look, you know what? It's getting late. Go home. You heard me? You heard me. Okay. I said go home. I'm not going to discuss this, this anymore. Look, baby, if it's if it's about what I said, no. I'm not going to say anything yes, again. Let's just eat. eat. Make me do what I will. <laughs> Just, I can't just go home like that. Just do it for me. Do it for myself. 
c'est pour rien. so difficult for me. What have I done for Christ's sake? What have I done? Hey! Look, I've told you to stop disturbing yourself. My son and I can handle the situation. No, I will not. He is also my son. Yes, he is. Look, you are disturbing me. I'm watching tennis. It's okay, please. So this is more important. This is more important, eh? I thought you said you were going to do your head. Yes! <laughs> Like that, I will take this set. Beside me, need no one. 
want to care and share all my thoughts and my needs. I don't want to fall in love and I need no one to love me. People say I'm crazy, but I know what I've been through. as he gets better, before he starts to affect his career. Don't worry, it won't get to that. Look, I'm a doctor, you know. I can handle it. Hmm? All right, bye-bye. Have a nice day. I promise you I will. <clears throat> Doing with Roderick. He doesn't respect you. Ada, Roderick has a problem. And I believe it's something that has to do with his emotions. You know, sometimes Roderick can be so, so loving, so caring. You know, and oh my God, Ada, his parents love me. They are so nice to me. That's because they know their son is sick. What did you say? You heard me wrong. Well. I said he's sick. Ada, did you come into my house to insult my fiance in front of me? Is that what you did? No. Look, let me tell no. you, do not ever, no. ever in your life be no. 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 Don't, don't, don't. Benita! Yes, ma'am. Are you alright? Yes, ma'am. I'm Good fine. Good ma'am. We just had a little girl-to-girl -girl argument, but we're cool. Yeah. You have a call. 
No, I have my mobile yet. On the landline. Oh, okay. Hello, let's go. Mr. Roderick, I presume? Yes. Have we met before? No. Okay. Won't you at least offer me a seat? Of course, of course, please. Thank you. Yes, how may I help you and who are you? I can see you're a very principled man. Anyway, I've had some of your kind as my clients. Clients? So, I, I, sorry, did you say clients? Yes. Who are you? You know, actually, your parents contracted. No, 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 I said, who are you? My name is Lydia, a psychoanalyst. You're a psychiatrist? A psychologist. <laughs> psychiatrist, psychologist, you know what, I, I don't give a damn. Can you leave my house? What? I said get out, out. But at least you Please, don't... will you get out? Now? There's no need to shout. Well, at least you should know what you do. I just said get out! Please get out of my house! That, my son. It is for your own good. Let her just evaluate you. You me. You, you sound like I am. I, I, I am some research. I am your son. Please, please, please. Cooperate with the lady. Eh? I am sure she will help. Your father and I are just trying to make sure that you have the best. No, no. I don't think I am the one who needs evaluation in this house. I don't think so. You and your husband should leave me the hell alone! Leave me alone! If you need a psychiatrist, go to the hospital! Not me! Rod? Rod? Yeah? For my main consult? Okay, fine. Okay, then I'll come in. Hello, Mr. Ray. Hello. Hi. Won't you at least offer me a seat? Leave my office. There's no need being hostile about this. Uh, listen, I am trying to be as polite as I am, as gentlemanly as I am, and believe me, I'm trying very hard not to be angry. Leave my office now. Okay, I'll go. Since this is what my client wants. I am not your client. Why don't you go and meet the man who employed you so he can be your client? It's okay. I'm leaving. Thank you. My office, now.
Sir. Did you see that lady that just left here? Yes, sir. The next time I see her in this office again, as she leaves, you leave. I'm sorry, sir. No, no, no. It's not I'm sorry. Did you hear what I just said? I did, sir. going on here? Hi, research. What are you doing in my house? Now <laughs> get out. Except that your mind is disturbed. That girl you call a shrink, whatever you may wish to call her, is a mind mender, easily the best around. That's why I sent her to you. Dad, I have said it before and I will say it again. I do not intend to get married. I will not get married. You will marry, son. If I did not marry your mother, I wouldn't have got you. So you will marry. And the idea of sending her to you is to ensure that she helps you pull yourself together to be prepared to marry. Alright. I'm fine. I am perfectly okay. I do not need a psychologist or a shrink to tell me whether I'm okay or not, Daddy. That's what I'm trying to say. The next time I see that girl near me or anywhere close to where I am, she will not believe what I will do to her. On the contrary, you might just like what she will do to you. Close that door behind you, son. <laughs> Look, 
What do you want from me? I am so sorry. I embarrassed you in there. I'm glad you know you embarrassed me. I'm so sorry. I apologize. What exactly do you want from me? I mean, you keep chasing after me. Is this something personal you want from me or you're just doing it in a bid to analyze my character? Of course not. All I want to do is just talk to you. Did you ever find out from the man who employed you the kind of person that I could be? He told me you were sociable. So, my, fa my father told you that I am sociable? <laughs> now that's a laugh. <laughs> and I bet I'm seeing all of it. Don't patronize me, okay? Lydia, right? Yes. Go back and tell the man who employed you that his son is not in for such cheap games. But they still need. Listen to me. I guess you're in a better position to convince him about this. Try, my daughter. Hmm? Women have a lot of influence over men. You have to try. Mom, Roderick is too strong for me. I'm trying to be very cautious here. I don't want him to get angry at me again. I don't. Just go. He is in a better mood. Mom, mom, go. How's your day been? Hectic. I have lots to cover. Wow. This is a lot of pressure. Indeed. <laughs> pressure indeed. Darling. Uh -huh. Don't you think you're overworking yourself? I mean, you need to really slow down considering your health. Yeah? I mean, you should slow down. Baby, why don't you consider the doctor? I mean, just give, give, okay. give her a chance. Alright, alright. My mom sent you, didn't she? She sent you to me.
so let's get talking. But before we start this session, as you call it, I would um, like to tell you that you're just wasting your time. Because frankly speaking, I really don't know what it is you want from me or you want to get. So my advice to you is forget about this whole thing and just go, go back to your work. I'll take my chances. Like I told you before, my name is Lydia, a psychologist. And I oh, okay, right, all right. Save me the details, okay? Because I don't need it. But I need yours. Really? Mm -hmm. My name is Roderick Obunna. BSc, Political Science, University of Joss, MSc, International Policy, Howard University, Maryland. Currently, I'm working on my thesis. I'm hoping to get my PhD in the next year in International Policy. Anyways, why am I wasting my time discussing such issues with you? You probably don't need it. No, no, no. Honestly, I do. I need them more than you can imagine. Okay. Presently, I'm a consultant. I consult for firms, companies, industries, conglomerates. Okay. I help them in um, issues and matters of all concerning um, international policy or administrative work. That's it. <sighs> Mr. Roderick, why have you decided not to get married? Pressure. Undue, unnecessary pressure. I presume your mind is somewhere else. No, no, that's not it. It's just that I'm getting bored with this conversation. That's all. Very well then. Now tell me. Tell me about your past. I just can't believe you're saying it's over. Just, just what are you doing to me? Huh? Oh, please, you don't have to break my heart now. Not now I'm, I'm so committed to your love. Okay, you know what? Just tell me, whatever I've done, Mama, whatever I've done wrong, just tell me, Mama, I'll make amends. I promise I'll make amends. Mama, I love you. I swear to God, I love you. Massage. <sighs> yeah. Even if I try to explain to you, you won't understand me. But I'm under pressure. Serious pressure. And the bottom line is that we can't be together. We can't, but I still love you. Yes, I still do. But you have to go now. And if you leave now, don't bother coming back. Don't bother coming back. You have to go. It's over. It's over, Basaj. I see. See, you already made up your mind. No problem. I'll go. Go. I'll go. Go. Just have a nice day.
Let me ask you a question. I will give you an answer to whatever question you want to ask. But first of all, tell me about yourself. I mean, anything you feel I should know. There is nothing to tell about myself. Why? Because that has nothing to do with the present. And why do you say that? I just told you, whatever is behind me, is behind me. Okay? Now, if there's nothing else for us to do in this class, can we call it a day? Mr. Roderick, don't you think it would be easier to disprove your father's perception of your situation as psychological by you opening up a little bit to me? If I don't observe anything wrong with your reasoning or temperament, I'll stop coming here. So, back to what I asked you. What do you feel I should know about your past? You don't mean it! Of course. You know, I was so pissed with him. You know, if this guy could actually provide me with a first game, mm -hmm. and he took it from me and threw it into the pool, just yeah. like that, I should have known that he was also capable of providing me with another. You know, right. another one better than the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the one I lost. Or rather, the one he made me lose. <laughs> Please. Yeah, but I'm just I'm just curious here. Yeah. You know, like when you think about you such know, things. Honestly, it, it's, it's really funny now, but yeah. it wasn't funny at all that time. I oh, was yeah. pissed off. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm here. <laughs> but there's something I'm I'm just wondering, yeah. How mm -hmm. how did you now cope? Hello Dorothy. Hey. How are you? Bye. Mm. How's your work? It's fine. Hi. Um, I'm Benita. I'm oh, oh, of course. I'm sorry. This is Lydia, my shrink. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, anyway, now I'm beginning to understand and settle down on this whole arrangement. Since I now know it's all about sit to sit and talk the talk. My pleasure meeting you, Benita. Same here, Lydia. Thank you very much for everything. It's okay. Vivi, I'll be inside to some things. Right, right. Once again, thank you very much. All right, then. So, now I, I'm just curious, okay? Mm -hmm. With all this ordeal, how are you able to be consoled from, from the tears and stuff? Oh, well, actually, there were tears of joy. Mm -hmm. You know, but all those things is in the past now. You know, human beings and past experiences. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> now, it's time to hear your own story. You've heard mine, so I think I'm entitled to hear yours. <sighs> Sorry, I... I never talk about my past. There is something you're keeping from me, Roderick. I mean, all I need you to do for me is talk. saying that because I know he wouldn't allow you pride to his past. No. I am suspecting that he is psychotic. In most cases like this, there must likely be a certain experience that is holding him. 
Um, do you have any information you think I might know? Mm. Well, there is none that I know of. Um, he had a wonderful childhood. We, uh, we gave him the best in terms of education. And um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think there's anything. I don't know. Exactly. He never likes anything. He, he never did. Um, no, I, I think he had the best. I think, I think he had the best. All right, then. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Um, all right. I guess I should be on my way, then. Just keep trying. told me was that you had a wonderful childhood. <laughs> wonderful child? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I guess they are right. I, I had a wonderful childhood. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am so sorry, Mr. Roderick, but I have told you, whatever it is, all you need do is confide in me, and I'll help you get it out of your system. Trust me. just finished my exams and graduated from secondary school. What? My love, there is just something about you that I will never let go. What is it? Your honesty, sincerity, and love. Me too. 
I feel so different whenever we are together. That is love. Honey, let's vow never to let each other go. Forever. It's left to you, Redrick. I'll do anything you ask of me. I, I love you so much. I so love you too. <sighs> Baby, this entire world would have been so empty without you. Oh, I don't like it. You're flattering me now. No. Flattering you, babe. You are. I'm telling you the truth. Okay. Can I have your palm? No. Oh. Please. Come okay. on. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's take a walk. A walk? To where? To my world. Your world? <laughs> oh. Our world. <laughs> Red <laughs> Young girl, don't you do any other thing except follow this boy around? I'm asking you. Don't you ever try being useful to your parents by staying at home and doing some household chores? Don't your parents ever think about your future? Don't you think you're too young for this kind of life? Who introduced you to this kind of exposure? If your parents don't bother about you at this age, then I wonder what you'll become in the future. I want you to leave this compound now and let me never see you here again. Rodri! Come, come back here. You're the only child in this family. And I want to ruin your future. Do you know that this relationship could compromise you permanently? Do you know that? You are preparing to get into the university and you believe that the best way to occupy yourself is by buzzing around this girl. She doesn't have a future. Her parents don't think about her and she's already beginning to lead an unanchored existence and you want to follow that. You want to compromise your future. What kind of person are you? There are so many things that could happen from this relationship. You could pick up syphilis and spend all your life taking drugs. That's if it doesn't kill you eventually. Worst case scenario, you impregnate her and your future ends. You are not working. You can't even get a job because you're not qualified. And you think that the best way you can lead your life is by compromising the reputation I have spent years to build? I will not take that from you, son. I will not. Henceforth, you will discontinue with this relationship. I don't want to see you near this girl again. Have you heard me? Have you heard me? Yes, Dad, yes. I'm getting to the house. I want you. I warned you, didn't I? Leave this girl alone. That this relationship was going to put you in trouble. I knew that one of two things must happen. One, it's either you pick up a venereal embarrassment from this kid or you impregnate her. Now she's pregnant. Now she is pregnant. And you're standing in front of me. Fine. That proves one thing. 
You are now a man. I want to clap for you. Congratulations. Now that we have established that you're a man, because you can do what men do, tell me what your plans are. You heard me, didn't you? Tell me what your plans are. Are you not talking again? Your father warned you. I warned you. But you wouldn't listen. Now it has happened. What do we do? Roderick, what do we do? That's your son. He doesn't know what to do. Right? She's pregnant. Now you don't know what to do. How to proceed. Daddy, I'm sorry. Mom, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Have you heard your son? Have you heard your son? He's sorry. Your son is sorry. Look at this idiot standing in front of me with his tail between his legs. He is sorry. Frederick, get out. Leave this place now. we do now? Hmm? What are we going to do? I want this boy. I said if her parents can let her out of the house as early as 9 a.m. to come here hanging around you like a blue bottle, this kid is not being taken care of. This was a predictable certainty. Now, <laughs> we have it on our hands. What are you going to do? What are your plans? I'm sorry. It's all right. to the baby. Did she keep it? My father asked her to come to the hospital. Prepare her, I'll be there in 10 minutes.
but I feel so weak. I'm terribly inside. Oh. See, I'm sorry. Hey. Come on, rest in this water for you. It's hurting me so much. Now you know. Now you know everything. Any more questions? I wanna be alone and need no one You see? You see what I mean when I say the past is better left in the past. Go, just, just leave me alone. Go. Go! I need to be left alone. I'm fine. Ah! 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 I'm fine! Ah! Ah! I just broke my head. Appreciate it. Ah, just take it easy. You know it's a minor fracture. Thanks. <laughs> All right then. See you tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot. Anytime. I appreciate appreciate it a lot. Mm -hmm. I'll see you tomorrow then. Okay then. Wrist. Okay? Besides, I just didn't want you to get excited. 
Dean, why wouldn't you? I mean, why would you even bother telling me when you now grow found with, with your wife? What if you call her? You shrink your daughter? I don't even want to know. I what? don't care whatever you call what her. What did you just say? Exactly what you heard me say. Exactly what you heard me say. I am not in the mood for this today because I have a spring wrist to take care of. And you also have me to take care of. So you better be in the mood, Bobby. You better be in the mood. What is it? Eh? You've been like this all this while. And you didn't want to tell me what happened to your hand. Talk to me now. I am your mother. What is it? I am fine. You are not fine. Roderick, you are not fine. Why, why, why are you treating me like this? Eh? Why are you treating me like this? I'm you are fine. fine, eh? You are fine, eh? Okay. Going out with another girl and still threatening to beat you up. He doesn't love you, and you better tell your mom, okay? <clears throat> I don't want to bother my mom with all these issues. For crying out loud, Ada, I'm old enough to take care of my responsibilities and my issues. So, I mean, why should I be bothering her with all this? But your mom has to be aware. I know. Ada, seriously, if not for Roderick's parents, this, this whole relationship, marriage thing for me would have been history. I would have just forgotten about it and, and just carried on with my life. No, but they're, they're, they're so involved. His parents will not marry you. Roderick is the person that will. And to make matters worse, he doesn't even love you. I don't know why you're throwing yourself on him. Him. I'm not just I'm not throwing myself at him. I'm just I'm just confused. I'm so confused. Look, I'm just an emotional wreck. I'm just confused. I succeeded in getting to a dark spot in his life. It appears he had a traumatic experience, mm -hmm. which he has never revealed to anyone. And I suspect that is what is responsible for his present state. Good. Sir, do you know of a certain young girl called Ifunanya? Huh? Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what, uh, what, wait, no, no, I am hearing that name for the first time, hmm. yeah, uh, no, no, I, I don't, I've not heard that name before. You know, he revealed that he was in love with this girl like mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that something really bad happened to her 
which he will never forget or forgive. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's uh, merely a figment of his imagination. You see, you know, these people who are disturbed, you know, um, it is generally believed that occasionally they have some lucid moments uh, within which period they make statements that appear to be normal, but in actual fact, I mean, well, you know, you're a psychiatrist, you, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, it's a figment of his imagination. Okay, I beg to take my leave now. Oh, my regards to madam. Congratulate you so far. You've done a good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. But I need to ask you a few questions. I need to know something. Go ahead. Do you know anybody by the name Ifanaya? Ifanaya. Does the name ring a bell? Yes. Yes. That's a long time ago. She used to be my son's friend. Why is she? I need to know her story. It's a very long one. Let's save it for another day. Please, ma'am, I suggest you tell me everything I need to know. Because from all indications, the circumstances surrounding her pregnancy and that seem to be the source of your son's problem. Well, I guess my husband will explain better. find me here. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking um, we could have the session here. No. No. Why, you don't want us to have a session here? It's not professional. I prefer we have the session in your place. Uh, so why weren't you picking my calls? I was busy. Busy? Look, I'm beginning to enjoy our sessions. And um, I'd like to have it as often as possible. Otherwise, I'll probably have a relapse. So when next you see my call, do me a favor. Pick it. Okay. But you have to go now. No. <laughs> okay, can I get it? <laughs> This is payback time, huh? For what I did to you the other time, man. Huh? <laughs> God. All right, I'll go. But um, can't you give a gentleman something to quench his thirst, please? Okay. I'll get it. But immediately you have it, you're out. No problems. Come on. Don't keep a gentleman waiting now. But seriously, you have a very nice place.
Um, Omar meets Roderick, my patient. Roderick, my friend, Omar. You're welcome. observe some changes in his behavior. I guess the doctor is doing a good job. But I tell you that she is uh, easily the best around and that she is going to be very useful to our son. I am glad you are making the observation yourself. <sighs> I can't wait to see my son well again. Mm, he'll be all right before long. It's okay. Can I serve your breakfast? No, not yet. Let me let me finish this chapter. Tell me why we're here. Why? Is it strange? Of course it is. Because you've never taken me out for a drink. True. That's true. Well, I, I've been thinking. And I, I want to officially say thank you. Because um, you've put in so much effort into making me what I am right now and I must say I feel free I feel like I've been given a new lease of life I feel reborn you know thank you and I also want to apologize for giving you a hard time <laughs> And for calling you a shrink, <laughs> my psychologist. You're welcome. At least, good to know. And um, there is this treasure that I have, and I'd like to give it to you to keep forever. 
Your treasure. What is it? I needed help. I needed love. Needed a friend to hold in the cold. Someone to care and share my needs. I needed I'd like for you to help. I needed love. I needed life to share. I needed a we never dated. And you don't even know me. Yeah. But you see, I am. How are you sure that I'm the right person for you or that you are the right person for me? I am one guy who knows what he wants. And I want you. With you, I am at peace. I feel alive. Please, take this ring. Touched my heart. And it's not you I want in my life. All of my world is crashing. All I want for I'm sorry. Lydia does to me what nobody has done before. And God knows I can't even control it. Please. This is so bad. I mean, this. It's so unfair! It is so unfair! This is so unfair! This is so unfair! Please stop. No! Yeah, what? 
Push me out of the house. Take me out of the house. Take me out of the house. Let me see you. And you do not even touch me. I will see you right now. Right now. Will you listen to me or not? You're fighting over a man. Why will you fight over a man? Why will you fight over a man? anybody. Listen, there are decisions you can't take on your own. Decisions on matters of the heart. You must consult me. Right? And that is why I have said you just have to marry Benita. She is the girl for you. Can't you understand? That all you care about is fulfilling your dreams. And that's what I have been ever since I was a child. Sorry to disappoint you, Dad, on this issue. I will not marry Benita. Shut up. I will not shut up, Dad. I do not love her. It is Lydia that I love. I have tried for three years to love her, but it's not working, Dad. It's not. Roderick, sit down. Sit down. Look. <clears throat> I know you're old enough to marry a woman of your choice. No mistake about that. I don't want to impose anybody on you. But look at it this way. It is common knowledge that girls take after their mothers. Her mother stuck to her father until he died. And I know that if you get married to this girl, she's going to stick to you, come rain, come shine. Besides, she has other very exciting qualities. She is brilliant. She is beautiful. She is docile. The one quality you must look for in a woman you want to marry is understanding. And I believe she has it. I've been associated with the family for a very long time. That's why I'm telling you this. Don't you see that this is the person for you? With all these qualities, what else would you look for in a woman? Nothing, Dad. Good. Dad, I appreciate the fact that you have found a wife for me. But the fact still remains that I do not love her and I will not marry her. I see. You're now going to challenge my decisions for your own good? All right. I am saying, and I'm putting my foot down, that you will marry Benita. Not again. What? Not again, Dad. What do you mean? I heard you said if Unaya was a figment of my imagination. How could you? How could you? When you and I know she didn't make it out of the theater alive.
Don't you think it's high time we stop all this and, you know, break it up? There you go again. Talking about breakup. You invited me all the way from South Africa just to come back here and be with you. Right? You made me part ways with Basaj, my boyfriend. And you know it. You know I left him. So, we're talking about a breakup. It's not going to work. And you know. Why do you like rubbing it in all the time? I have to. Huh? I have to. I know very well that, you know, I was the one that asked you to come back to Nigeria. But... <laughs> just try and understand, please. Understand what, Lydia? Do you know you're being selfish here? Yeah. You are being selfish. And it's not fair. Lydia, it's not fair. You can't do that to me. Lydia, I can't do that to me. I love you. Please. Please. You can't do that to me. I love you. Someone ever told you how much I wanted the very best for you. Now my heart is broken, watching you hurting, and I don't know what to do. If I could change the past, and I'll do just that. Yes, I will, yes, I will. For me to show you. And I made it all for your good Please forgive me I'm so sorry Please try so hard To give up the past Just let it go Let it go Please let it go let go the past, just let it go, let it go, please, let it go, let it go. I am not on seat. Okay, sir. I was violated when I was 20 years old by my auntie's husband. A man I I took and adored as my own father. Eventually, I became pregnant for him. I couldn't tell anyone because I was so scared. So scared that I'll be thrown into the street. For this, I, I hated men. I hated myself and I swore never to have anything to do with any man in my life again. That's a wrong decision. See, every woman needs a man in her life. Yeah. I gave it another chance. It was almost my wedding day. Only for me to wake up one morning and I couldn't find my fiance. 
Little did I know that he was married with kids, all residing in the U.S. Man. Oh, that's terrible. That's really terrible. I... Months later, I met Omar on a course in South Africa. She was so cute and sexy. Somehow we became friends. And I realized we were compatible. How the whole thing developed into a relationship. Honestly. Believe me, Roderick, I cannot tell. Then I came back to Nigeria. And I realized I was I was so lonely. So I convinced her to move back to Nigeria. She did. And I took her in. The rest is history. I know, I know you won't forgive me, but... No, no, that's not it. That's not it. Things have changed now. All right? So, look at life from a different angle. Forgiving you, and I understand. Hmm? That was why I decided that I must come with my wife, so as to reassure you, um, everything is still as it is. The arrangement still stands, there's nothing to worry about. But he has proposed to another woman. You see, as they say, exuberance is the prerogative of youth. Even if I decided to play mind to my son so that I can monitor his every move, when I decide to take a break, he must be compelled to express himself without supervision. Again, that's his entitlement. He could decide to propose to a million women. Good. But you see, for as long as he remains under my roof as my son, I call the shots, and that can never change. So you have nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. If he says so, Dr. Buna, the fact is that I don't want my daughter to see emotional heartbreak because of this relationship. She's not a liability. Other men are coming. <clears throat> Anybody who looks at your daughter will tell that she will never lack male attention. That's what nature has bestowed on her. So you don't even have to remind me of that. You see, you and I know how long the relationship between our families has lasted. That I want to cement because we, sh we can't always be here. This is why I have decided on this marriage and um, Nothing, repeat, nothing can change it. Thank you so much, Dr. Buna. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. let things be the way they go. Though it might be very difficult, I know. I know, Benita. But with time, I promise you'll get over it. Ada, my father once told me something. But he saw 
Rest in peace. He said, if you have a pigeon, you love and cherish so much. Sometime, let it out of the cage. If it comes back to you, then it's yours. But if it doesn't, don't cry. Don't get worried. Because it has only gone to pave way for something that you really deserve to come. Though it is very painful, very, very painful. Yeah. But I have, I have accepted my fate. Just the way it is. And there's no going back for me. No going back. Thank you very much for for being there for me as a sister, as a friend. I just want you to know that I appreciate everything. I always be there for you. Okay. No man deserves a drop of tears from you. That mom, Benita is driving me crazy. I am not talking of Benita, I mean Lydia. Lydia, yes, mom. You won't understand. You always get around the impressions, eh? Mom, you know what? I am getting tired of all this. I am getting really tired of all this. It's getting me up to here. I don't want to discuss this issue anymore. Anymore. Roderick, obey your father and mother so that your days will be longer than the land your Savior has given you. Can you just cut this Bible quoting thing? Every time you think you want to make some point to me, you keep quoting the Bible. It's not going to work, Mom. What am I, what am I thinking? After all I have been through, I do not expect that my own ideas will be accepted by you or anybody else. Excuse me, Mom, I'm going now. Roderick! 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 Now that you have resolved to get married, I must say I'm impressed. I'm happy. And uh, he's just got to be Benita because at this point, when you, you can't afford to jilt her. You know what I mean, don't you? Have you finished? You're talking to me like that? Are you mad? Roderick, you don't talk to your father like that. Uh-uh. Roderick. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. They didn't talk to me anyhow. He's 36, he's a man now, he's working on his doctoral thesis, so we're operating at par. We're all men now. Let me just tell you one thing. If you decide to contract marriage with any girl outside Benita, you will not get my blessing. Okay, Dad. Some time ago, you almost destroyed my happiness. Now I am convinced you are determined to ruin my life. 
With all due respect, Dad, it will not happen. I will not let it happen. Rodri! Rodri, come back here! Rodri, come back here! It's okay, it's alright, it's alright. Rodri! It's okay, let him go, let him go. The young man, every young man is entitled to occasional outbursts of exuberance. It's a face, and he must get over it. Well, he will, he will. to us a madman happens to be my husband to be. It's not possible. It's not. Hey, there's no need to shout. No, I'm shouting. And let us not forget that this happens to be my house. That's not the issue. That's not the issue, Lydia. The issue is that you are toiling with my emotions. You're toiling with this relationship. What is wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me. Nothing. Just listen to yourself. It is over between us. Can't you get that into your head? Really? So you want to leave me in So you mean it? Oma, it is high time we stopped all this madness. And, and let's think of something meaningful to do with our lives. Oh, 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 look at you. Look at you preaching to me. Look at you preaching to me. Who started all this? You did. You did. Now you're preaching to me, right? You are no. preaching to me. You are preaching to me, Lydia. No, you cannot stop. You said it. Now that your son has got you ready to get married, why not allow him to get married? Give him a free hand. Let him make his own choice. And as for the girl that died years ago, I'm happy that the family is not making a lot of fuss out of the whole situation. It's been 20 years since it happened, but I've not been able to leave it down. You know, I did not want that association to continue. So when my son told me that she was three months pregnant, I knew that they had been hiding it, and I decided to take the child to the hospital and at least examine her, since she has not been going for antenatal checkups. I discovered that the fetus was developing along the fallopian tube you know, ectopic pregnancy. And if this was allowed to continue, it would eventually rupture the fallopian tube and endanger the life of the mother. So I thought the best thing to do would be to terminate that pregnancy by evacuating and then cutting out the fallopian tube, which I did, and it all went well. But she got up from the operating table. On her way out, she collapsed. She was rushed back to the theater. She didn't get up from there. I've been trying to live this experience down. I've been able to 20 years after. 
You should try to forget it. It's one of those things. So try to forget it. Be yourself. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, I'm sure you don't know me. Of course I don't, yes. Sir, my name is Oma. Oma Sirichupu. Lydia's friend and former roommate. Lydia and I were into an, an, an unholy association. But since I got born again, I decided to quit that kind of dirty life. And I've been preaching to her to also quit because I want her to make a good home in the future. But sir, she wouldn't listen to me. Rather, she goes about threatening my life. So a friend told me that someone will be getting married to her very soon. So I feel I should come and talk to you. Maybe you can convince her to stop threatening my life, sir. Honestly, I don't, I don't understand you. Sir, sir, please. My what, life is in danger. What am I expected to do? I, I don't understand. Look, I am an obstetrician, a gynecologist. I am not a psychiatrist. And quite honestly, you're sounding to me like somebody who's got a few screws loose. I mean, I, I have you had lunch? Yes, sir. What, what am I supposed to do? Sir, please help me. I don't know. Maybe just just take a look at this, sir. Please. Maybe you understand. Silly lesbian manifestation. All right, I'll keep this. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye bye, sir. she told you is not true. They were lies designed by her to, to disrupt Lydia's wedding. You think so? Do I think so, Dad? I know so. I, I've always known she was up to no good from the start. That's just the way I... Yeah. It's all yours, sir. <laughs> Dad. I... So even if we decide not to marry Benita, as you have always insisted, certainly not this lesbian rascal. Dad. Are you satisfied now? You never know with women. That's a novel I read almost 50 years ago. I think it was written by Peter Chini, one of the Levy Caution series, you never know with women. All of my world is crashing, all I want for goes down the drain, everything I do ain't working, somebody please
please come rescue me. All of my world is crashing. All I want for goes down the drain. Everything I do ain't working. Somebody please come rescue me. I've worked so hard, so hard to make a mark. And I make sure that all I do is right. Yet I'm so scared that something might go wrong. Hey, something might go wrong. The more I try, the more it seems so hard. Oh, my greatest fear has come upon me now. Hey, has come upon me now. Come upon me now. Oh, 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 oh. All of my world is crashing. crashing. All I want for goes down the down drain. The drain. Hey, everything I do ain't working. It's working. Somebody please come rescue, rescue me. me. All of my world is crashing. crashing. Roger, it is obvious you don't want me around here. I've been asking you what the problem is, but you don't seem to have an answer to it. I get it. It's obvious you, you want to be left alone for a while. I'll leave you. Just call me whenever you want to see me. All of my world is crashing. All I want for goes down the drain. Everything I do ain't working. Somebody please come rescue me. All of my world is crashing. All I want for goes down the drain. Everything I do ain't working. Somebody please come rescue me. All of my world is crashing. All I want for goes down the drain. Everything I do ain't working. Somebody please come rescue me. All of my world is crashing. All I want for goes down the drain. Everything I do ain't working. Somebody please come rescue me. I've worked so hard, so hard to make a mark. I make sure that all I do is right. Yet I'm so scared that something might go wrong. Hey, something might go wrong. The more I try, the more it seems so hard. Oh, my greatest fear has come upon me now. Hey, what has come upon me now? Oh, I am talking to you. What is the meaning of this? What kind of cheap black is this? Oh, you want to ruin my relationship? What? Did you say ruin? Lydia, hey, look at you talking. You got me all the way from South Africa. Just come back here and be with you. You remember that? And now you're here talking about who? Do you know what I gave up? All my boyfriend, my business, everything. Just be with you. Together forever. All of us. No other arrangement. Yes. Yes. Don't talk to me. That was not in the past. Oh my. Get this into your head. I can't continue living this kind of rubbish life. What kind of nonsense are you talking about? I am in love with someone else. He cannot work. I am in love with Roderick. No. Decision is mine to make. 
Listen to me. I am your father. And I know what is best for you. You will not tell me that, will you? Look, if you insist on going to do this, all right, you go ahead and I'll watch you. Oh, watch me, Dad. Watch me. See me because I will wed her. In fact, I've wed her already. Yet, I will wed her. No, 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 there's something anyone can do about it. What is happening here? Ask your son. Don't break your Dad has started again. He has started again. He wants me to marry Melita. I don't love the girl. Why does he want me to marry her? He told me he married you out of love. Dad, you said you married my mother out of love. Your father didn't force you. Your brother didn't force you. Why do you insist I marry Benita? What is it? What have I done? What have I done to deserve this, Dad? Sit down. Sit down. Roderick, you must believe that your father is fast turning into a tyrant. That is something I want to tell you now that I've never told anybody, not even your mother. Benita's father was my professional colleague. After we qualified as medical doctors, general practice, we decided to go overseas to do some specialist course in obstetrics and gynecology. While we were training overseas, his circumstances were certainly better than mine. At a stage, I just could not continue because I couldn't afford the fees. He sacrificed a lot to ensure that I got through the course. He did quite a lot. He gave up his comfort, his convenience, to ensure that I graduated with him. Along the line, I took ill. It was diagnosed as kidney infection. I was to have been subjected to dialysis at a regular basis, and I did not have the money for that. And he said that instead of going through that trauma, he was going to donate one of his kidneys. He did. And unfortunately, he picked up an infection during that operation. A couple of months later, he died. I am alive today because he gave his own life. He is dead today because he wanted me to live. I said to myself that since he gave up his life to ensure that I lived, the only way I could keep the memory of our association alive is by bringing his daughter into my family. If I cannot be her father biologically, then I'll be her father-in-law. That way, I would have brought her under my roof as my own. You see, in addition to every other thing I have told you that Benita has as qualities, this is the prime reason why I've always wanted her to be your wife. I do not desire to inflict her on you. No. Because that will be unfair not portray me as a caring father. So, this is my situation and I sincerely hope 
that you understand it. I sincerely appreciate what, what you've done. If I were in your position, I, I would do the same. Dad, in the marriage situation, we have both parties. Who must live together until one of them dies. As they say, till death do us part. And there is only one thing that can sustain this relationship for as long as it lasts. And that's love. And nothing else. If I were to do as you've been insisting, that I marry Benita, that the relationship will not survive because there is no love. I just, I want to thank you for, for everything, for everything that you have done for me. I know that you have loved me like your own. And that's why you want your son Roderick to get married to me. But daddy, we have tried everything. Daddy, I have tried everything. But it's not just working for us. I know that Roderick doesn't hate me. But he doesn't just love me enough to get married to me. I just pray that someday that God will send someone like me that will love me just like Roderick loves Lydia. Daddy, I love Roderick. I love him with my whole heart. I love him so much. And if eventually we do not get married. I want his happiness. I want him to be happy, Daddy. I want the best for him. Daddy, right now, it seems that the only thing that can make Roderick happy is Lydia. So, Daddy, I beg of you. I beg of you, Daddy. Just let them be happy. Let them find happiness in each other's arms. Let them get married. Let them share the love and the care that they deserve. love you. I will always love you. 
just as I have loved my father. Sunshine to brighten my life. Then you came into 